Shalom brothers and sisters sitting here today with uh, the rain outside and the impending uh, solar eclipse coming up tomorrow and everything in the world heating up and I'm just chilling with my son. Tim. Yes. I got a couple of jokes for you guys today. Jokes are always good. Yes. Let's get everybody smiling. Did you know Jesus is divine? Of course. And we are the branches. Oh, funny guy. <laughs> I'm sure they've heard that one. Carry on. <laughs> um, who was the best comedian in the Bible? Who? Samson. He brought the whole house down. <laughs> <laughs> Bet they didn't think it was funny. <laughs> uh, 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 uh. <laughs> <laughs> what, what was what was Lot's? Last request of his wife while they were running away. What? Quickly check, are they following us? <laughs> that was way too salty for this channel. <laughs> and then, um, if you need to build a boat, I know a guy. He's a great architect. <laughs> uh, Funny uh, guy. Funny guy. And then the last one I've got for you guys today is, who's the best babysitter of the Bible? Who? David, because he rocked Goliath to sleep. <laughs> Permanently. <laughs> yes. Okay, I've got one for you. Oh, I'm listening. And then we'll call it. A man on a tractor just drove past me yelling, the end of the world is nigh. I think it was Farmageddon. <laughs> What? It's not an alpacalypse joke or a lomagin <laughs> joke. Uh, the joy is <clears throat> that no matter what's happening in the world, no matter how scared the people are about, you know, the bad things that could be happening with the eclipse and with the world war and with the pandemics and with everything else that's lying ahead of us, we are smiling <laughs> because everything points to Jesus. Jesus coming any moment in the twinkling of an eye. So we don't get scared, we don't get stressed, we feed the cats, we relax, we delve deep into the Word of God, and we spend time with the Holy Spirit. What do you think about the end of the world as a young person? It's quite exciting. A lot of people would think a young person would be scared about this stuff, but I'm not, because a lot of people view it as the end. But it's not the end, it's the end of this period. What's lying ahead is so much more exciting it's the beginning of the eternity. beginning of eternity which does not have an end it's going to be freaky to try and comprehend the time in eternity because it doesn't have time but it's exciting like i'm looking forward to doing all the other things after we get there not now it's like too much chaos is going on now to do all the fun things that other people want to do at this age but I'll wait till afterwards. I can do it with Jesus, like in person. That's exciting for me. So what's your priorities for now at this time while we wait, while the king is in the field, while he finishes up the harvest before the rapture, while we're living and occupying? What is your focus now? Growing closer to God and the word and trying my utmost best to be like a lighthouse to those around me that are lost in the world that desperately need Jesus. I need to wake up before his return. So what's your advice to people on that? How do you go about doing that? How do I go about doing that? Um, just you need to have the fruit of the spirit. You need to bear those fruits so that even if you don't verbally interact with someone, that they can see this person as Jesus. That's like the best goal to aspire to in, this, in the sense of um, getting people to Christ is they can recognize Christ is living in this person by the fruit in their lives. And I'm not saying just do that and don't verbally interact with people. Pray for the Holy Spirit before your Amen. day begins to guide you into that place, to give you the boldness and the love for the lost so that you can go into this place and also ask the Holy Spirit to open the doors for me. And then also I add a little extra, not just open the doors for me, but nudges me through the door. Because sometimes the Lord opens a door for you and you're just like, awkward. Uh, <laughs> so a prayer I had as well, a part of the prayer I had is that the Holy Spirit just nudge me in the direction of the door if I'm stuck. And then you just start that interaction. Like at work, sometimes I'll be behind the counter and then 
someone comes in, the Holy Spirit just prompts me, like, cool, gospel tract, let's talk Jesus. And they'll be like, what's this? It talks about Jesus and how to get to heaven. They're all excited and you start a whole conversation. It's really nice. And it really makes my day when I get to do something like that. Um, get to speak Jesus to someone. Like um, yesterday, I didn't get to um, necessarily speak to a customer about Jesus. It was very busy. But one of my colleagues that only comes in on a Saturday came in to me at my lunch break while I was reading Bible, asked me what I was reading and what was happening so far into the book, then proceeded to tell me he's struggling with John and what other recommendations I could have for him. So that was a really fun time getting to talk Bible with one of my colleagues that actually wants to grow in Christ, that wants to learn more about Him. And he wouldn't have asked those questions had you not been reading your Bible in your lunchtime. Yes. So so, it's, and you weren't directly approaching them. You were just <laughs> spending time with the Word and they approached you. So the Word itself is the lure. <clears throat> and it's also making time. Some people like struggle to read daily because they're like, oh, I didn't make time. Yeah, they're there. But like, for example, I read Bible in my lunch break. Be the odd duck because the odd duck stands out. And then they approach the odd duck to see, hey, what the heck? What are you doing? And that's your opening. The Holy Spirit will make the foolish wise and the wise foolish. Yeah. But it's, it's really like important to make time because a lot of times we say, I didn't have time to read Bible today. And it's like, well, you did play games. You did spend like two and a half hours watching TV. You did this, this and this, which weren't necessary for your day. Yet you're saying you didn't have time and using that as your excuse as to why you didn't spend time in the Word. There's th That's also why I do the lunch break thing. And it's not just the lunch break. You can't like, I'm not always satisfied just doing it once a day. It's like with your meals. You don't eat once a day and you're happy. It's the, it's the bread of life. You need to eat it more than once, at least more than once a week as well, like daily. The most amazing thing for me, and I, I'm really proud of him for that, is our Bibles. Uh, and we won't change them because they're special to us. They are literally falling apart at the seams because of much use. And they're being sellotaped back together and they're full of notes. And they look incredibly bad. But you know what? They're workhorse swords. And now he brings me his Bible the other day, which was perfect. And it's falling apart and it's coming loose and I have to sellotape the pages. Because you know what? We're leaving soon. <laughs> it needs a minor patch. And the sword is good to go again. The sword never loses its edge. But the sign of a worn Bible shows that something's going right in your life. And you're actually focusing on the things that are important. And the things that are important is God. And when you make God the focus, then everything else becomes easier because you can take those difficult things to God. Because you're still struggling with normal things in life. Hmm. You're still having issues that crop up. But you can take them to Jesus. And you can go and sit with the Holy Spirit one side and seek His face and find exactly what you're looking for, which is living waters. That is the upside. We've got all the tools in the basket. God has equipped us for a time such as this. Do you think you're properly equipped? Or do you think God skipped something on us for the times because these times are crazy? <laughs> Who would have thought? I wanted to go swimming in the Euphrates. Now it's freaking empty. <laughs> what next? You think the moon would turn to blood? Uh oh. Hey, just <laughs> how someone switches off the sun. I mean, in South Africa, we've got ESCOM. They load shed everything. And they reckon the final stage will be they'll go and switch off the sun. That's coming. But I don't think it'll be the ANC government in South Africa doing it. It'll be the angel in the sun. And he doesn't work for our government. <laughs> So it probably tax people too, even though there's no sunlight. Right? Exactly. They'll put a tax on the darkness when it comes. So <laughs> mankind is so lost and broken without Jesus. Because we just lose our way completely. You need God to be able to be sane in a world that has gone to insanity as normal. Good is evil. Evil is good. Insanity reigns and they are now no longer hiding the devil. He's parading in the streets and on your movies and on Netflix everywhere. 
and people are cheering. Yeah, in, in Star Wars, they had this one scene where she says, this is how democracy dies, to thunderous applause when the evil villain takes over the entire galaxy and he declares himself, you know, the supreme ruler. The same way that the Antichrist is going to do three and a half years from now. And it will be to thunderous applause to this amazing man who's going to save them. Sad. Really sad. But God. Yes. But God. Anything else you want to share before we say goodbye? Hmm. Stay strong, stay in the word, and pull together as many people as you can before the Lord comes and fetches us. <laughs> Don't slip through the cracks in the net. Hold on to Christ, even if it's just by the hem of His garment. And remember, important, evangelism is not just preaching behind the pulpit to the lost, preaching on the street corners to the lost, preaching at the crusades to the lost. Those are important. Don't misunderstand me. But evangelism is you shining the light and the love of Jesus Christ when you buy your shopping. When you go fill your vehicle with fuel. When you take a walk down the street and you walk past that stranger. You and how you interact with them. That is evangelism. The things you say and the little things you mention about Jesus or the truth into their lives. God says those seeds that you plant will not come back without bearing fruit. That will take root in their lives. <clears throat> you might not be the person that sees that growth or that fruit or the watering of that fruit. It might actually even happen in the tribulation period. But you were faithful in planting those seeds. Make a difference. If you're not an extrovert and you can't stand on top of a rock and preach to 20,000 people, I love that kind of thing. It might not be your thing. God can use you in that kind word to that cashier when you're paying for your goods. And she'll think about that for a while. He can use you just wearing a shirt with a message on. He will use that in that person's life. So each and every one of us can work on the Great Commission. At all times, every day. How did I share Jesus today? Because the time is dark. The hours are few. The king is in the field. The enemy is prepping. Everything is at hand and we are on the verge let us be busy with what the Lord has us being busy with. Amen. Amen. God bless. Have an amazing day. Look up, all of you that can see the eclipse, take lots of photos for us because South Africa, you know, we're not going to see it. <laughs> Even if we could, they'd probably tax it like he says. <laughs> but um, yeah, enjoy it. And maybe we get caught up into the clouds that would be the win i absolutely for that yes. i cannot wait and if we're not we know how close we are and that the lord is at the door to come snatch his bride we will occupy we will preach the word and we will push on until we run this race straight into his arms and never let go until we get put into naughty corners god bless you shalom <laughs>